that the attention, please? No, thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the Zoning Board of uh, November 14, 2023. My name is Marty Aikens. I'm the chairman. Board members, Mr. Himmel, Mr. Chin, Mr. O'Brien, and behind me, Director of Inspectional Services, Bob Conlon, and our clerk, Mrs. Noonan. If you have a cell phone or a page, please put it on silent or vibrate. You don't interrupt the meeting. If anyone wants to speak, please step outside because it's hard to hear as it is here when people are talking you can't hear. A week in here, put it that way. Uh, under old business. I have a, oh, wait a minute, I got it right here. Yo, Mr. Chen, anyone that's going to speak tonight, please stand up and raise your right hand. If you think you might speak tonight, please take an oath that you won't be able to come up here. If you think you might. Mr. Chen? Yes. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matters now in hearing? Thank you. Thank you. Please proceed. Hmm? Uh, I make a motion. Right there. Yeah. First one. Make a motion to approve and waive the reading of the minutes from the regularly scheduled meeting of October 24th, 2023. Second. On the motion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Someone. Now, first of all, there's only four of us here tonight, so you have a choice to move your case or have it heard. Uh, the first one's going to be moved. Uh, CBA 2353, Dennis Caldwell, architects for variance to construct one vehicle garage in the premises number 131, Bunker Hill Lane. The applicant here, I have a letter from him. He wants to move it to, uh, we could, December 12th. Motion? Yep, please. Make a motion, CBA 23-53, Dennis Caldwell, architects for variance to construct a new one. A uh, vehicle garage on the premise number 131 Bunker Hill Lane, Quincy. Make a motion to continue to 12 12 23. Second. On the motion, stand on all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Uh, interesting. Uh, ZBA 2356, reconsideration of approval of Neil Johnson for variance to construct a garage addition in the existing driveway with a car lift and expand the front bedroom over the garage on the front number 72 South Bayfield. Is the applicant a representative here? Uh, yes. Uh, here's, here's what we're gonna do. I just got a whole bunch of paperwork, I guess, from you. Yes. Name and address, please. Uh, John Bowen, Cormac SUNY, 100, uh, uh, Cambridge Street, Boston. Okay. So we're going to have to filter that that out. But what I'd like to do is is you can you can state your case. Uh, Council, would you like? You're all set. Oh, you want to like speak out? Set. He's set. All right. And what I want to do is I want to let the public address the case, and then we're going to make a motion to continue it till we can get all this paperwork. Read and check. Plus, there was four people on that. One of them's not here. I have to look at the whole film, see what happened at the meeting, and uh, read all this and filter this stuff to be on the next case. Uh, just a point of clarification. Sure. Um, so, when the, in terms of the continuance, what I addressed the, the substance of our letter and, and what our defenses or mm -hmm. objections are, would that be at that continuation hearing? Uh, yes. Okay. In that case. Um, I'm more than willing to withhold our, our case okay. for that hearing. I would just like to get one objection on the sure. record, which is that uh, our position is that, one, we don't, uh, by coming back and appearing say we're not waiving any procedural objections we have to right. the sort of reconsideration process, right. whether today or in, as a continuance. Right. Uh, our position is that, to the extent this reconsideration does go forward, it's based on very narrow grounds, mm -hmm. that essentially the August hearing, the August 22nd hearing, was the hearing on the merits of the variance Objectors had the right to be heard then, they were heard then, and there was a unanimous 4 0 vote. So, um, our position in terms of the reconsideration mm -hmm. is that it's based on the very specific grounds raised in mm -hmm. Mr. Conlon's memorandum. Um, so, that's why I would object to mm -hmm. the objectors getting a second bite of the apple, so to speak. The people speaking. 
I believe that was the opportunity. They had the opportunity to be heard on the 27th. So that I would just like to state that objection for the record. Um, to the extent we're again given the opportunity to address the merits of our letter at the subsequent continuation hearing, mm -hmm. I can withhold that until then. But I just wanted to get that off the record for now. Thank you, sir. Uh, I understand what you're saying. I wasn't in the case. I didn't get to see that. I'd like to hear in person what the neighbors have to say about it. I'm going to be sitting on this case. So I'm going to object to your objection. Say no. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, is there anyone here on Bayfield that wants to speak? Yes. Name and address for the record, please. Barbara Quinn. I live at 71 North Bayfield Road. Quinn, you have the floor. And I've been lucky enough to live there for 30 plus years. It's a very unique neighborhood um, for a variety of different reasons. It's right off Wollaston Beach. It has a park as you come off the beach that was built by the North and South Bayfield neighbors years ago to honor the World War II Bayfield members who lost their lives in World War II. And as you turn around North Bayfield, it's a very narrow, winding, one-way street that connects with South Bayfield, which also is a very narrow, one-way street such that you only have one parking on one side of both of those roads. The homes are modest in nature and some interspersed bungalows and there's a lot of shared driveways because the houses are very close in proximity. Those that might have their own driveway and a garage, the garage is small, barely fits one car and they're all definitely set back. Bruce Knapp shared that garages do have a 25 foot setback um, yet Mr. Johnson is trying to circumvent that by saying it's an extension to his pre-existing non-conforming house. Yet it's not a case that any structure can be attached to a non-conforming existing. An extension is only allowed or not allowed if it's detrimental to the neighborhood. And from what I understand, there's been no proof of hardship that's been provided. So I am in total opposition to Mr. Johnson's request. It's a massive garage on top of the existing driveway with a car lift and a master bedroom up above. It definitely doesn't fit in our quaint neighborhood. It's far too dense to the neighborhood and it's definitely far too detrimental to its character. Thank you. Thanks, Quinn. Is there anyone else? Anyone else want to speak? Second call? Come on up. If anyone else wants to speak, come on up, line up. Try to keep it to a rough a couple of minutes if you could. Good evening, Glenn Jurisco, 47 North Bayfield Road, Quincy. Uh, I've lived at uh, 47 for 25 plus years, mm -hmm. and what uh, Ms. Glenn said is true, that it is a very tight, dense, quaint neighborhood. And while I'm appreciative of Mr. Johnson's uh, revival of the property at 72, South Bayfield, and do recognize his efforts to uh, upgrade it and make it um, much better than it was when he bought it. I feel I have to speak against this proposed addition. Uh, the garage doors being uh, very close to the sidewalk, uh, and he put seven inches according to the plans I've seen. Uh, there's no room to park a reasonable sized vehicle in front of the garage doors and not have it interfere with the sidewalk. Um, it will also be difficult if backing a vehicle out of there to see the sidewalk and somebody walking on it. We do have a lot of children, we have a lot of elderly, the sidewalks are heavily used. I also believe from the last meeting there was discussions about um, shadows and stuff like that and I believe that that low angle roof with the uh, peak running north with the high point running north south w could indeed cause shadow issues to the other properties. Uh, no it wouldn't at midsummer that's true in midsummer I have sun on the north side of my house in the winter, I barely have sun in my backyard. And almost on the whole lower floor is not touched by the sun very much. A lot of moss. A lot of moss. Because there is a 
well, there is a, the sun, of course, moves to the south. So the sun will be to the south of his house when in the winter. Um, I also was somewhat puzzled by uh, a lack of clarity on the final height of this. It was, there was a lot of approximate and close in something like the height of the existing building. I've read the, I've seen the elevations that are provided. And I don't, we can infer the certain height, but I, I don't, I haven't seen a, a set certain height to the final of this, pro, of this project. Also, I do believe that this final project is out of place in the neighborhood of early 1900 houses and would look much better um, as a commercial property. It will look like a commercial property beside these houses. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Here you go. Hello. Hello. My name is Kelly McBay. Um, I am a resident at 39 North Beefield Road. I was not able to attend the meeting on E22, but I did send an email to Mr. Harris on E21 that was not read at the meeting. So I just wanted to um, express my thoughts via that email. So um, I wrote an email to Mr. Harris stating my opposition to the proposed variance request by Neil Johnson at his property at 72 South Beefield Road. Although I am not a direct abutter to that property, I um, am concerned about what this construction would entail. It is my understanding after receiving the notice that it's going to, quote, construct a garage addition in the existing driveway with a car lift and expand the front bedroom of the garage. I just can't imagine how it's going to fit in the current location. I've lived on Bayfield my whole life. We're a very close-knit community. We look out for each other. And the people directly abutting that property, the woman behind Mr. Johnson, she's 80 years old. She lives there by herself. We all look out for each other. So I'm just here in support of my neighbors, the direct abutters, and I just um, can't see how it can fit in this property. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Good. For anyone else? Second call? Yeah. Sure, come on up. My name is Alan Cubian. I uh, don't live on Bayfield, but that area, those two streets with the park at the end. What was your address? My address yeah. is 58 The Strand. And uh, what was I going to say? It's a community. They live close to each other. When someone gets sick, the neighbors all know about it. Somebody needs help, the neighbors know, all know about it. People that have been living there have been there over 30 years plus, and as they pass away, new things are happening. And, and what's going on in the city, it doesn't take much space to do something. This is a time maybe to, to just think back and I, what this man did with his house, he bought a house that was all beat up and it looks nice. He did a nice job. But there comes a point in time, is that garage gonna be too much, too high? And you don't wanna ruin the feeling of neighborhood, what is there? And that's all I'm here to say. I just, uh, I think that too many things are being done that we don't see that are big, and I think it works out for the best. But this is something you consider. And whatever you decide, you're the ones that know the rules. You know, he's good at what he's done. I saw him, I was here last time, and he presented a nice presentation, and he's very knowledgeable. But uh, I, you folks know the rules too. And so I'm just hoping that you consider what the, the neighborhood is. And sometimes aesthetics is better to to look out for aesthetics of the neighborhood and, and the character of the neighborhood. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Is there anyone else? Counselor, you want to speak? 
Harris, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, William Harris, 74 Ashworth Road, um, City Councilor. And I pulled up all of my emails that I, I received, and I know I, I sent a letter and I received an email because um, there was a contradiction about whether or not there was a discussion. And I'm looking at the email that was sent to me, and it was pretty clear that it was a shit. And, and I made it quite clear that um, in my email, it's, it's, it's pretty clear that um, uh, I asked the question, you know, uh, again, there was no phone call. You know, obviously, there's a lot of activity. But the neighbors, the neighbors uh, obviously made it quite clear the night of the meeting uh, with their letters and emails. I forward some of them on. If any, any of them slipped, that would be on me, but, and don't blame me for that. I mean, blame me for that. Don't take it out on the neighbor, on this neighborhood. Uh, anybody who's seen the city council meeting last night and the previous uh, night, uh, uh, one a couple weeks ago, um, a major, uh, uh, what's gonna go, go on in those cut through streets, which is Bayfield especially, trying to slow down the traffic and um, uh, have a major study that's going to take place. We're bringing in everybody in the world because it's been uh, since I've been in office uh, almost you know, over seven years um, trying to figure out how we can fix it. But my point being, everyone wants to live in Swan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not everyone. <laughs> so, well, not next to me either. Um, no, I'm on, um, but um, I can say that um, there was never a discussion. And at any time that something comes in front of me, and, and, and there's usually a conversation on the phone, uh, is have you talked to your neighbors? Obviously, this didn't take place. And, you know, um, I, you know. You, you see what's taking place here. There's other people that probably aren't coming up. There's other ladies, uh, other folks. Um, 68, I got a phone call today. Uh, she already submitted uh, in the previous uh, meeting. She, she said she called me this afternoon. Um, um, she's, very, she's very sick. She said, Bill, you please be there tonight mm -hmm. and express that I, I am against this. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I would like to know if there's anybody that has come up and said they're in favor of this. And I don't think we have that. So um, again, the rules are the rules. You folks, do seg you folks are here on your own time and you should be applauded. And, um, and I know that uh, when I first started uh, seven years ago, me and Marty, we kind of, yeah, we laugh about it now, but it took me a little while to realize that you folks are here to do the right thing for the, for the city of Quincy. And I ask you in the, in the neighborhoods, I ask you to please reconsider this, um, the, this, uh, the ruling and uh, think, it, think it through. I mean, the, the email is pretty clear that it's a shed. We were talking about a shed and it's really not a, just a shed, so. Thank you. Thank you for what you do, and and uh, thank you. Coming thank tonight. you. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, is there anyone else? Last call. I'd like to make another statement if there's no one else. All right. One is there anyone else want to speak? I'll give you a time in a minute. Is there any correspondence? No more. That's done, right? All right. There was a really cute email. Yeah, I have it here. That's what I'm looking at. I didn't look at the name yet. Yeah, there's another one here, too. Uh, when did they come? 11 8, 11 6, what's that? Uh, did they 11 6? We didn't name an address in the record. Get a gist of it, pretty much most of it, yeah. 
There's only two of them here. Okay, Rita McHugh, 76, South Bayfield Road, North Quincy, 02171. While this is not directly related to the current request, as an aside, I have work done to my home over the years, and while I would have liked a bigger deck, I had to ensure the structure conformed with in the variance slash city requirements in order not to infringe on my neighbor's space privacy rights. The standards are in place to protect the other neighbors that could be negatively impacted. He must have been held to the same standards if called respect for others. The city zoning laws are in place to do just that. I will not be able to attend the meeting as I will be out of state on the 14th. However, the email should hold the same weight as if I were at the meeting in person on the number 14th, voicing my opposition. I appreciate the opportunity to voice my concern via this email message. Sincerely, Rita McHugh, 76 Southfield Bayfield Road, North Quincy 02171. One more. Thou Fam, 61 Southfield Road, Quincy 02171. Dear Mr. Akins, I oppose Neil Johnson's request for a variance to construct a garage addition as existing driveway with a car lift and expand the front bedroom over the garage as proposal out of character for the neighborhood's appearance. This is a beach type cottage bungalow community and his request to expand will not fit in with that. This construction type will also negatively impact the neighbor's views, lighting, green space that is needed in the community. Neil will say and show pictures indicating his construction will not affect others' light and views, but that simply can't be true. A person cannot put up a big structure in front of or beside or across from someone else's property and say the person's view will still be the same. We need to and must keep the footprint of our quaint beach type neighborhood intact. Perhaps an option for Neil would be to move to a community with the space available to construct the house that he would like. I just can't be at 72 Bayfield Road. While this is not directly related to the current request, as an aside, I have work done to my home over the years while I would have liked a bigger deck, I had to ensure the structure conformed varying city requirements in order not to infringe upon my neighbor's space <coughs> privacy rights. The standards are in place to protect their neighbors. Other would be negatively impacted. You must be held to the same standards. It's called respect for others, and the city zoning laws are in place to do just that. I will not be able to attend the meeting as I will be out of state on the 14th. I could call it Father Henry Paul's Council, you want to say something? Make it brief. Yes. Um, as I stated previously, I'll wait to address the merits of our correspondence at the next hearing. I would just ask that as you read our correspondence, you play, pay specific attention to exhibits J and K, which are the correspondence between Mr. Uh, Johnson and Mr. Harris, sure. as well as Teresa uh, okay. uh, okay. and, and Mr. Harris, which did attach the plans that we're here to talk about today for 3D mockups. The shed issue was a 2020, 2021 issue, so there may be some confusion. Yeah, it was called permit and getting it written. So I just wanted to make that clear for the record, but yeah. um, and uh, will there be a date set tonight? For yes. The okay. Yes. Thank you. Before we, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I mean, we heard from the neighbors, and, and we have a lot of homework to do, and we got a lot of reading to do, and uh, I really want to uh, take a look at the film. It's going to take some time and filter this stuff here. So why don't we? Uh, what's on our agenda for? Uh, no November's done. Uh, what about December? What, December. I know. Is it full yet? Mm -hmm. Oh, that case was on. Sorry. Uh, the recase yet? It'll be a while. All right. Being late night. That's all. Uh, let's see if we can get that. Uh, the 12th for everyone, and we got to get one more guy. Brian's got to get back by then, so it's easier. 12, 12. Huh? 12, 12. We're not going to hear any more testimony from, from, from the neighbors. Uh, that was heard. Just the lawyers will speak. Uh, so the 12th, does that work for you guys? Yes. Uh, yeah. Right. And then let's get a hold. We'll, we'll talk to lawyers if anything changes. If one guy can't be here, now we're in the same thing. We've got four people, which... If he's going to be here, then you can do the same four if you want to. So, Thank you. That did the case, right? We, we have our emails and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Very good. So make a motion for the 12th. Make a motion. ZBA-2356, reconsideration of approval. Neil Johnson, variance to construct a garage addition to existing driveway with a car lift 
span the front bedroom over the garage on the premises numbered 72 South Bayfield Road, Quincy. Make a motion to extend to 12 12 23. Second. Other motion? Seeing that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Oh, it's Ron Stairs. Congratulations, Council. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, awesome. we got another council here. Congratulations. <laughs> what a tough opponent you have. Thank you. That was close. <laughs> Good old David. David Monica. Well, he almost lost. <laughs> right, Monka. <laughs> that was him. He brought in for the other one. Uh, under new business. GBA 2377. Nicholas Johnson for bearing special permit floodplain finally and replace and expand the porch and add in addition to the rear of the home on premise number 32 Parker Street. Mr. LaRoche? Oh, hey, hey, the house, the house, easy on the door. They didn't set the brakes up, they didn't set the brakes on Those drawings cost a lot of money. Must be jet lag. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the zoning board, uh, my name is Brian LaRoche. I live at 67 Mears Ave in Quincy. I'm representing the applicants at 32 Parker Street, uh, Nick and Justine Johnson. Um, the proposal for uh, this uh, application is um, they have an existing uh, dwelling that has a three season uh, porch that wraps around the side view. So it comes across the front, wraps around the side, and then shows to the back. So it's a, an old Gambrel uh, home. Um, they are looking to uh, rebuild uh, this three-season porch mm -hmm. and uh, enlarge it on the left side of the property. That five feet? Yeah, and the reason being is that um, the existing dwelling, they couldn't go up because the foundation is a uh, block, reinforced yeah. block foundation. So uh, they've already uh, done some work on the inside, so they've renovated it. Uh, so rather than uh, you know, have to take the whole house down to redo it, um, it would be easier if they could sort of reconstruct this uh, uh, three-season porch that's unlivable right now. Uh, no work is planned on the second floor. We're not going to change anything up there. Uh, most of the work really occurs on the left side of the property. Um, the, uh, you had two decks. You put a deck on the roof, right? Yeah, floor. so the existing house only had one means of egress. So in order to get two means of egress, we need to um, add a, a deck off the front and a set of stairs so that we have two remote act, uh, exits. The property is very steeply sloping and you know it's a very uh, tiny property, 2,500 square feet. Um, really the net addition that we're adding is so small, it's mm -hmm. hundreds of feet, it's really mm -hmm. a matter of making what is there uh, livable. Uh, so it's a pretty modest addition. The addition's making two bedrooms, correct? Correct. Now what it's doing. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, that's the purpose of the addition is to be able to get these bedrooms. Because right. the upstairs is, is the master bedroom. Uh, it's fairly small, even even still, it's the whole second floor because of the, uh, the, right. the sloping. <laughs> I have one question. Is there a bathroom on that second floor? There it is looks not. like two clubs. No. Why, yeah. why wouldn't you put a bathroom in the master? It's not a very big house. <laughs> I've seen it. I, I mean, it used to live. Two houses up. Two yeah. houses yeah. up. Right, right in the corner of Crosby. But. Yeah, no bathroom up there. Uh, but you have three bedrooms and one bath. Uh, Nick is a plumber, so if he could add another bathroom, I'm sure he would. <laughs> well, I just don't get that. I was reading that and going, oh my god, that poor household. Right now, it's uh, two little kids. Bath the bedrooms are far more important than the other bathroom. Oh, they'll get their bedrooms, but there's one toilet. So we do have a number of uh, variances uh, that we're going to be requesting in this application. Um, I think the one that is the most um, you know, difficult is the site being so small, the number of parking spaces. Right. Um, we cannot, right now there are no, there is no driveway, there's no parking on site, um, and so we're asking for a variance on, on that uh, requirement. Uh, that's uh, kind of a big item for it. And then, uh, of course, this, Underneath there, can't you take two spots and go underneath that house? 
Again, because of the block foundation, it would be challenging, um, I suppose. One, one wall, you know, one wall, you just put the beam on the front. Yeah, I suppose we and then you, could you get do two that. Spots right off road. It would roof off. Yeah, I mean, you, the whole front yard would be a driveway. No, <laughs> you could. But but you know, you got to plow down there too. You're gonna, you're gonna have two, three cars. You know, the next people that go in that house that are gonna have. No place to park either. And, and yes. I know Parkhurst is playing a pocket because of the marsh there on the side. I get it. Someday there probably won't be. But I'm just thinking, why wouldn't they want two cars undone under that front deck, at least half of that porch, five feet, so they could get two off three cars? Yeah, the existing house um, isn't wide enough for a. Uh, two cars but you could park one on the left from the distance so you did uh, i mean so if we were to beam over the existing block uh wall and and you know construct a garage we certainly could get a, a car underneath two uh, well you get one under at least and then you could get one to the left because there's only like 10 14 feet on the left or on the right yeah uh, um, side is about 19 feet correct we, to the house i suppose feet. another option too is we could um have just a driveway in park yeah. in front Right. Um, in in that case, get something in there, one car at least. Because we would have, you know, we could cut, we could bring the car in underneath, and then yeah. use some of the front area to, uh, to nose the car yeah. underneath. Right. Yeah. Half an under, half out, or whatever you got to do. Just leave it exposed. I mean, we've what been sure. Do I mean, to just take. I mean, if you're doing that, that much, there? if you're doing the work. Sure. I mean, across the front. We can we can revise our proposal to include uh, parking for two cars. We, we right. can do that. Sure. I think. It, it would make your house so much better. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We can make that uh, revision. So we're we're gonna do that. We're gonna talk about two cars in your front yard underneath. You know, you can do it exposed. Whatever you gotta do to get it under the perimeter, you can out and see them and tell them what you're gonna build down there. Brian can fix that. So I'm just looking through it. And why don't you come up and just uh, the record? Yeah. Name and address, please, for the record. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Nick Johnson at 32 Yep. Uh, so I was just more concerned about, uh, since the, we have the little ones, just mm -hmm. having them, if we had, there'd be no gate, like no way to like, because we come right down, we come right down here pretty much on the street. So I'd be more concerned about the but case. You really could have a gate there if you're going under. Could put a fence You could have a gate the right driveway. there. We could, yeah. When the kids come out, you still have a gate. You just have a swing gate. When the kids are coming out, you close them. Yeah, in gate. either you run the fence along the side of the driveway right. to the corner of the house, right. so the driveway's outside of the fence, then area could do something like that. So you put two little pieces of fence to the house, and you get your thing there right there, too, or a little gate to get in. Yep. And a walkway right in and right out. So what's that? Like you get that? two cars off, off the street. Yeah, we could, uh, we really wouldn't. It's not a ton. I don't think you're talking about a ton of much. No. Yeah, just like more, the, like the incline of the, of the slope of the house, like the. It's going in. You're going in level ground. Right. right. From the sidewalk level, you go straight in. You drive right in. <clears throat> yep. Because underneath you. It wouldn't be a hard. There wouldn't be a ton of stuff. Okay. You get two cars off the road and your house is worth another 70 grand. 100 grand, maybe. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. Well, he's putting it in the bathroom. I'm, I'm not done with him yet. He's going to put a bathroom on the bathroom. Yeah. We'll have to come back for that. That's the bedroom. <laughs> you got to tell them when you did yeah. that that the floor to tell you the bathroom by the I'm going to put into it. You, know, you need a bathroom. Does that come with the Does that come with the, the driveway? <laughs> no, you got the driveway. <laughs> So the uh, the other the, I mean, the other issues we have is that the property itself the the lot is within the AE flood zone so we do have that uh, so we're asking for a special permit right. um, but just the way the contouring works mm -hmm. floodplain comes right up to the front edge I saw so uh, our stairs are what really get into the floodplain so um, that's for one right? we'll make we'll make the addition flood compliant we'll put the flood vents in it yep. um, so. That, um, so yeah, it's the side uh, variance, the parking, which we talked about. We'd still need a variance because uh, zoning would require three spaces. Um, but I think, uh, as you suggested, uh, we would amend our plans to include uh, parking for two on site. Two on site. Sure. Okay. Yep. Any other questions, guys? No questions. That's them in a second for you. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone want to speak in favor? 
His wife was smiling on him. Yeah. <laughs> Say, it wasn't my idea, it was his. He made you do it. Second call, third call, counselor. Congratulations, counselor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Glad to be back. Um, Dave McCarthy, 40 Whitney Road, Ward 1 Counselor. I'm in full support. I know that uh, there's a lot of cottages in the neck. And uh, Mr. Johnson now has taken a, a cottage and expanded because he, he, he probably loves the neighborhood and wants to stay. So I, beautiful, I, beautiful view there. Bro. Yeah, I think it's all, front. but it is a difficult, back. as Brian was saying, a difficult mm -hmm. spot yeah. downhill. Right. And just to get the parking correct, um, would it be like gravel pull in? Yeah, that's what you're going to put just, Yeah, yeah it's gonna, nothing underneath. It's in the flood zone. Yeah, so you're just going to gravel it in the yeah. front so you can pull a couple of cars in there. So, I and mean, you can go halfway under the deck, whatever is new right. the floor is coming out. Right, I'm looking at the, yeah. the, the photo. Yeah, no, full support. Thank you. Thank you, Council. What about the bathroom, Council? Yeah, what about the bathroom, Council? <laughs> you got two bathrooms. There you go. That's the third time I heard that tonight. Yo, plumber, I heard. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, piece of cake. Piece of cake. Get your apprentice, run some pipes up there, you're all set. Drain pipe, you're all set. There you go. All right. You could put a half bath up there pretty easy. Any half bath, at least. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Call that filing any close. I, I have a letter here. We received a remittal uh, above reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? First call, second call, no one will speak after that, huh? <laughs> Call that filing any close. I'll be in favor. I'm in favor. I'm in favor with the change. <clears throat> with the change. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. We, we'll change that with two cars on there. Special flood plan. <laughs> You're up, brother. Yeah, I'm up. DBA-23-77. Uh, Nicholas Johnson for variant special permit floodplain and finding to replace and expand existing porch and add an addition to the rear of the home, the premise of 32 Parker Street, Quincy, with the addition of two off-street parking and make a motion to uh, approve as presented. Second. On the motion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I, I, no, no, but good. Well done. That's great. Uh, Thank you very much. Brian, one thing. Can, next time you get them, can you make them a little bigger? I had to go find a pair of glasses. Sure. <laughs> That's not stuff. Yeah. The floors yes. are one page. One page. Got Three it. floors was tough. Maybe you can do two. two. No problem. Thanks. Yeah. Further on the tonight, another house next, can't we? Wow, you're building up your support, huh, Counselor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> GBA 2378, Patrick Foley Esquire for variance and special primary flood plan to construct a new single family home on a vacant lot in the premise number 115 117, Edgewater Drive in Quincy. Counselor, you're up. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Patrick Foley with a business address at 265 Willard Street. I'm um, joined here tonight with you know, Claudio, Nick, Steve, a civil engineer. Steve's going to be building it, hopefully. Um, and Nick's our architect on the project. Um, the property that we're here to discuss is 115-117 Edgewater Drive. It's in the residential age only district of the city. Currently, right now, it's an empty lot. Um, I know about a year or two ago, there was two structures on that lot um, that the applicant, when she purchased the property, um, tore down. A little background of the applicant. Um, she's lived across the street um, for over 30 years. By all accounts, she's been a good neighbor. She takes care of her property. Uh, what she's seeking to do right now in the vacant lot is she's seeking to construct a single family home, two bedrooms, um, two car garage. Um, it's 7,840 square feet. Um, the living area is going to be 2,178 square feet. Um, applicant is planning to sell her house across the street and move into this um, as her new uh, primary residence. And I'll have Steve and Nick um, just go over the, uh, the inside of the house there. Uh, Steve Trudeau, uh, 35 of Iron Road. Contractor. Uh, Nick Pellucci from Mass Architect. Uh, Can I have your address, please? 
Yeah, that's 45 wooden year drive in there. Good. Thank you. So these are just a couple of 3D renderings. This is from the street side. Mm -hmm. um, it's on Edgewater Drive, so the water. Is that a painting? <laughs> it looks it, doesn't it? It's a 3D it rendering. Wow. Computer generated. AI, AI generated. Yeah. yeah, that's not for nothing. Um, Try to use kind of natural colors and blend it in with the kind of surrounding. Um, we did keep under the height limit, mm -hmm. and she wants it to blend in and mm -hmm. just fall. Uh, we do have to raise the first floor to be above the floodplain, right. so it was tricky to do that. But we got everything she wants, and yeah, on the first floor, our basement level was a two-car garage. Yep. The lot shape is kind of a beard. Yeah, it is. So it's got fun in both sides, right? Yeah. Uh, Julie really wanted, uh, you know, uh, an ocean-facing window, so we kind of took advantage of how that lot shape and kind of created a triangle-shaped room. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first floor is pretty much open with the kitchen, bathroom, and the second floor is two bedrooms and the bathroom. Uh, I go back so far, I potted in a little teeny house now when I was a kid. <laughs> Like 1960, uh, yeah, that explains it. Yeah, that explains it. Well, everybody wanted me to save the little one uh, and rent it out and make it an Airbnb. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, council wouldn't no, allow you. No, 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 no. I got enough of those on the neck already. <laughs> I'm trying to get them. Oh, God. It was a cute little house. It was. Is that it? That's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I think Nick tried to stay within the setbacks, but I think the only setback we really is technically the, the setback on the big road. Yeah, so. we're trying to treat Littlefield like more of a side setback uh, instead of two front setbacks. But it is, and it's two fronts. So. Um, kind of How far are you on the side setback? 13 foot 3. Yeah, it's supposed to be 25, right? Right. And what other what other relief do you need? We have a floodplain. Floodplain, yeah. Also? Uh special permit for the floodplain and then the setback. The setback on, yeah. on Littlefield? Yes sir. And that's that's it, it is tough down on that lot. The lot you got the triangle lot and then it goes down and it goes back yeah. over in the corner. Beautiful place to put uh, a vegetable garden or something out little corner over there. It probably was years ago, I don't remember. But, mm -hmm. uh, what a beautiful property. Is that the painting that's going to be over the fireplace? <laughs> sure will. Hey, it really looks like it's painted. Oh my God, that's so bizarre. <clears throat> Stuff they get out, huh? All right, guys. Any questions, guys? No, yeah, we've got a, two baths. Two baths. <laughs> two baths. Two baths, two bedrooms. Mr. Chen? No, just looking at the requested uh, stories. So it'll be three stories. Some mm -hmm. like three stories. Yes. yes. Floor first floor. story. Right. The first story floor is floor just floor. the parking for the garage. Yep. Yep. Up with all the vents and all that yep. stuff. Both of them. Yep. No other questions. Okay. I'm ready. Good. Thank Good. You. All right. Is there any you guys are all set? Anyone want to speak in favor? First call. Second call. Third call. Yeah. I was going to say. Oh my God. They had a muggle on something there, bro. Yeah, I know it's tough. Uh, John Orfield, 62 Grandmall Road. Actually, what Councilor Harris was saying before is saying that he was saying, you know, it takes a couple of meetings for yeah. Marty to warm up to, you know. Yeah, right. It took me a couple of years, yeah. but I love it. Three years. That's it. Um, but um, this is actually a great project. If you yeah, look at, beautiful. you know, what you paid for the land to Gorgeous. do this, to come to Quincy and to build that, that this is awesome. So it I just want to say I'm 100% in right favor of this, and I would love to live in that someday oh, myself so yeah. but that that's this is what we need in this is half. you, you talk about good new growth this is great new growth so thank right. you for building this right thank you john it is it is it is beautiful new growth councilor yes congratulations <clears throat> councilor. dave mccarthy 48 whitney road ward one councilor that's going to fit in with this oh. The additional houses that are popping up on Edgewater Drive again, a lot of them cottages. And yeah. you mentioned, Marty, the well, Mr. Chairman, the uh, the two little houses that were there, they were tired. Um, really it's a tired. beautiful corner lot. Yeah. Julia's been across the street, and uh, it just will conform with the, with the rest of Edgewater Drive. Is that 
that's become uh, a pretty spectacular place with a lot of new homes right. popping up. So this is a great addition. Right, Council. I, I, I hope the rest can follow that. Oh my goodness, yeah. that's gorgeous, beautiful. It's just the color. I mean, it's so earthy and everything. Wow. Wow, can't wait to see it finished. All right. Uh, call out out of hand and close. They've, DPW has no comments. Anyone opposed or undecided? First call, second call, third call. Close. I'll be voting in favor. Beautiful Absolutely job. in favor. That's a great little nice, beautiful. nice lot. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yep, I'm Gorgeous. in favor as well. Yeah, also. I have a motion, please, Mr. Hamill. For the motion, ZBA-2378, Patrick Foley, Esquire, for a variance special permit flood plain, construct a new single-family home with a vacant lot, premises number 115117, Edgewater Drive, Quincy. Make a motion to accept as presented. Second. On the motion, stand on, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Both. Aye. Both.